Aloha and welcome to Honolulu, the capital city of Hawaii. We have a very special video today because after years of anticipation, Hawaiian Airlines has finally taken delivery of their first 787 and today is their first flight using that aircraft from Honolulu out to San Francisco, their third busiest route, and we get to check it out in their domestic first class cabin. Timestamps will be down below so you can find what you're looking for, now let's go. Hawaiian Airlines is the largest carrier for Honolulu with nearly half of the traffic coming from them. As such, they have their own terminal here, half of the check-in being for U.S. mainland flights, the other half for inter-island and international flights. The check-in area is like 90% self-serve kiosks, and then to the side there's a couple agents to help you with queues for main and business class cabins. From there, through security, we get to check out the terminal here in Honolulu. Now if you're a regular on this channel, you've seen my multiple videos here, and you'll know that the airport is largely outdoor. That is, except for the newly renovated section. This is the fresh home of Hawaiian Airlines, and it is a great looking terminal. But it's a bummer to not have the same gardens and outdoor areas that the rest of the airport has. At least you can still walk there from here though. From here, we can also see one of their 787s. This one is not ours, it's actually the second one that was delivered and arrived recently, but won't be flying for a little while. Then there's two lounges in Honolulu for Hawaiian Airlines passengers. The first one is the Plumeria Lounge, which is free for international business class or Boston and New York first class passengers. You can also pay 40 bucks to get in or use Priority Pass, although typically there's a wait list about 30 minutes. For us, however, we head downstairs to the Premier Club. This is the lounge for West Coast bound passengers like us. Underwhelming is one word we could use for it, it's really just a private space to relax. It does have comfy seats, charging ports, but that's about it. There's some refreshments like a soda fountain and the local Lion Coffee, but there isn't any sort of food however. I just feel like it would have been easy enough to put some little finger snacks or something. Good space to relax, but not much else. After charging up a bit, it was time for a party. Walking back out to the renovated part of the terminal, gate A4 was ours and the celebration was ready. First up, our aircraft was here and it was gorgeous. I mean, look at this thing. Not only is it a brand new 787, but it might be one of the best looking 787s in the world. Don't get me wrong, I love it, but I feel like calling it the best would be somehow slanderous to Air Tahiti Nui's 787s. Let me know your favorite looking 787 down below though. This one was given the name Kapuahi, named after the brightest red star in the Pacific sky. Then back amongst the giant crowd of people, the party started with some excellent local music. Then those musicians were joined by local dancers. Lastly was a short speech and a performance based on local Hawaiian culture, followed by not a ribbon cutting, but a pre-departure blessing on the leaves of our entranceway. After the crew took their photo op, it was time for boarding. For every passenger, they had these lays set up, and they laid each of us as we entered the gate area for the agriculture screening and then on to the aircraft. Welcome to the beautiful and brand new cabin of the Hawaiian Airlines 787 Business Class. The 121 configuration helps the airline meet the market standard with private spaces for each person, closed doors at each suite, and middle seats close enough that you can still be in the company of your seatmate if you choose to. These cabins are designed by Adiant, who began a partnership with Boeing in 2018 and designed a whole portfolio of seats. Hawaiian Airlines was actually the first ever airline to select the Adian seats. These are also similar to Qatar's 787-9 seats, which I also have covered previously on this channel, but since every airline is able to add or remove select features, it still looks unique besides the base design. In the back of this tube is the favorable 333 economy setup, featuring a few rows of extra comfort seats with more legroom. That 343 setup of high density economies allows for more seats, but dang, the seats are narrow. 
This setup is much more comfortable and I'm always glad to see it. If you think back to the infamous Air India economy video on their longest flight, you'll remember that one of the only things that redeemed that cabin is the 333 setup, which allowed for some real good sleep at least. I'd imagine that Hawaiian's cabin would be similar. Back at our seat 5C, I obviously would have loved a window seat, but I booked this seat the same day they started selling the tickets for this flight and the window seats were already sold out. It didn't help they blocked out a good set of the tickets for their personal media, but fortunately I enlisted the help from others for some footage on departure and arrival. Starting in front of us, we have a touchscreen TV of an excellent size. Below that is a tray table that slides out and then rotates to fit the meal trays. Next to that is the literature pocket which is next to the button that controls the divider. This divider provides 100% privacy from your seat neighbor, but if you like the person you can lower it allowing for a perfect sight line, as seen here in front of us. Hawaiian Airlines actually marketed the ability to turn these seats into a double bed if you're traveling as a couple, as seen here from this photo on Hawaiian Airlines' website. Then the headrest, which is adjustable, and the seat itself, which is also pretty comfortable. Between the seat and the middle divider is a little cubby on the floor, which is where I kept my backpack. Next to that, there's also an adjustable armrest, which can be raised to rest your arm or lowered at bedtime to make more space. Then on the other side of the seat is the enclosed storage at the seat and the countertop. First is the reading light, which is right above the storage for a personal device. This also offers wireless charging if your device supports that. Next to that is an enclosed storage cubby, which includes a holder for the headset and a mirror on the door. And next to that is the little accent light for the seat. Below that is the charging ports and the seatback remote. Then is the counter, which isn't huge, but great for a computer or something while the tray table is being used for food. There's also a little drink counter on the front and the seat controls on the inside edge. Lastly, the seat has a closing door. We won't get a full look till we get in flight, however. Amenity-wise, it's reduced for this medium haul flight, but starts off with just a little pillow and thin blanket. The bedding is far better on their international and east coast flights. We were also given these noise-canceling headphones. For the pre-departure beverage, it was a choice between Paso Guava Juice, Champagne, or the Mai Tai. You know I needed that Mai Tai. Lastly, on boarding, we were given this metal luggage tag, paying homage to not just the flight, but the specific aircraft, with the aircraft type, registration, and name, including the artwork of the meaning of the name. Now this is the view from our seat so I will include borrowed footage for our journey to take off while we discuss the journey it took for Hawaiian to actually get this 787. The delivery of the 787 comes from a recent push to upgrade the fleet and grow the airline, especially within the US mainland market, but also their international market. The refresh started in 2019 when they finally retired their last outdated 767, which was replaced with the A321neo, now serving pretty much all US West Coast destinations. Within Hawaii, they continue using their Boeing 717s, and then internationally and on higher density domestic routes, Hawaiian Airlines currently uses the A330-200. These aircraft have gotten complaints largely in business class, which is still in a 222 configuration. I've previously covered that product on their Los Angeles to Honolulu route on flight number one. This configuration for their longer flights caused passengers to share their space with others in business class, which is fine if you know the person, but it can be a lot on their 11 hour flights to Boston or Sydney. Years ago, Hawaiian placed an order for the A350-800, which never ended up happening, meaning their orders became A330-800s. After concerns due to the lack of popularity of that aircraft, in 2018 they switched the order to 787s. The 787-9 is known for its great range, but Hawaiian chose it for other reasons, largely fuel efficiency. It allowed them to reimagine the premium cabins, switching to a 1-2-1 configuration, allowing for private spaces for every passenger. If you do want to sit next to someone, these middle seats are close enough that you can be in the company of that seatmate if you like them. 
They also increased the business class capacity from 18 seats on the A330 to 34 seats on the 787. Previously, they've been fairly conservative with their business class, choosing for the high-density configuration rather than the ultra-luxury, which is a strategy that United also employs in Hawaii with their outdated but high-capacity 777s that we covered previously on this channel as well. We probably will see the A330s still for a while, mostly because they have a much lower lease price, which should allow them to use them to test new markets potentially. These aircraft were scheduled to be delivered much earlier, but after delays caused by the pandemic, the first aircraft arrived in Hawaii, they held the welcome party for the 787 in late February, and conducted some test flights. And finally, here we are on the first ever flight of this new airplane, opening the newest chapter of Hawaiian Airlines. Now that we're in flight, first things first, it was time to shut that door. Now I see the resemblance to the Qatar 787-9 seats. The doors don't fully shut, leaving a gap to the sides and a larger one below. I also find that the suite doesn't go very high, allowing good visibility in for pretty much anyone walking past. I just feel like the door may be a bit of a gimmick, not actually adding too much privacy. Maybe it's better in sleep, but sitting, it's not a huge difference. Maybe seats like the Q-Suites have ruined my perception just since the walls go so high that you can't really see anything when you're in the suite or walking past. Then the menus, which were actually passed out before departure. This is the menu for their West Coast flights for this set of six months. Hawaiian Airlines partnered with local chefs Michelle and Wade Wioka to make some food that represents the islands. The food pairs with drinks from the islands, including the Paso Guava Juice, other juices, the Lion Coffee, Kohana Rum, and Maui Brewing Company Beer. As for entertainment, Hawaiian Airlines has a great range of selections. They don't have the common sets of movies, so I was able to watch things that I don't watch on every single flight. The shows did have a more common selection, but not as wide. They did have multiple episodes of each show, at least. As for Wi-Fi, I was reading about Hawaiian Airlines using Starlink Wi-Fi on their flights, although I wasn't able to connect to anything on this flight today, so maybe not yet. And after passing through some absolutely gnarly turbulence, they brought tablecloths and our beverages that we ordered before pushback. For me, it was the Kaloa Pineapple Passion Drink. After a little while, about an hour or so into the flight, it was time for the meal. As with the beverages, we ordered before departure and I chose to go with the curried braised beef brisket, main course which came with baby carrots and fingerling potatoes, along with the first course of a grilled papaya salad with papaya seeds and an olive lemon vinaigrette. Goes along with the warm taro roll. Then for dessert, executive chef Michelle Karawika designed a rainbow cake to go with the choice of coffee, tea, and liqueurs. I chose to go with the chamomile tea, just didn't need more caffeine for a 9 p.m. arrival. Then we flew through the sunset, but in my windowless seat, the only sunset I got was the colors and stars that changed on the ceiling. Hawaiian Airlines' story began in 1928 with Inter-Island Airways, founded solely to connect people between the islands that make up the Hawaiian archipelago. They didn't get the Hawaiian Airlines name until 1941 and continued with new aircraft until entering the jet age in the 60s, shortly after Hawaii became a U.S. state in 1959. 
Hawaiian's first flight outside of Hawaii wasn't until the 80s, and even still it was only with charter services. But due to the limitations on the DC-8 and 707 by the FAA, they mostly serviced the South Pacific. In 1985, with their new L-1011s, they announced their first ever scheduled flight outside of Hawaii, from Honolulu to Los Angeles, finally putting them in competition with the other major U.S. carriers for the first time. A year later, they began international services with Australia and New Zealand flights. After financial issues in the 90s up until 2005, they were finally able to grow throughout the mainland, adding San Jose, Seattle, Portland, and Oakland on top of Sacramento, San Diego, San Francisco, and Los Angeles. In 2010, they were able to launch Tokyo flights and quickly became their best-selling international city, second best overall after Los Angeles. They also spent the rest of the 2010s adding tons of new Asian destinations and the longest domestic route to New York, which was later passed by their own Boston service. More recently, the biggest news is their merger with Alaska Airlines. Currently, United is the largest carrier from the mainland to Hawaii, which is followed by Hawaiian and Alaska. The goal of this partnership would be to strengthen the competition and add more destinations to Hawaii, especially for connecting passengers in untapped markets that are operated by Alaska. The merger is a long way from complete, but in February the majority of Hawaiian Airlines stockholders voted in favor of that merger, with the goal being to finalize the merger within a year and a half. The growth is exciting, with Hawaii remaining as one of the world's largest vacation destinations. With the 787 on high-density routes, we may also see them push the range to new international cities. We have hints that Hawaiian Airlines is looking at flights to Perth and London. Australians visit Hawaii more than anyone else besides the Japanese, and the UK has seen a rise in Hawaii tourism, but still sees no direct service. The 787 can reach as far east as main Europe and as far west as Central Asia, although it doesn't sound like they'll necessarily push it to its range limits. With the freed up A330s, I'd be shocked if we didn't see a couple more US destinations that aren't on the west coast, as well as East Asia and Australia. Most importantly, however, could be the resumption of Manila flights, as Filipinos are the highest concentration ethnicity in Hawaii. Honolulu was part of Philippine Airlines' first ever U.S. route in 1948 and was served by Hawaiian until 2014. These 787s open up a bit more range but also free up the A330, so I'm excited to see where the airline goes from here. For now, we just sit back and wait to see what happens. Hawaiian Airlines really took it home with this product. From front to back, the cabin is completely reimagined, and with the 787, the cabin is 10 times more comfortable than that of the A330. You land just feeling a lot less groggy. I only hold my gripe against the windows, but I didn't have a window on this flight, so problem solved, I guess. Everything is just incredible. The business class seats are comfortable, and with their long haul bedding, I'm sure it'd be easy to get a good night's sleep. The amenities, the decorations, and especially the food and drink really set that island vibe. And that's why people choose Hawaiian Airlines when they fly to Hawaii. Flying United, Delta, or some other airline to Hawaii kind of just feels like any other flight. On Hawaiian Airlines, the tropical vacation starts the moment you get on board, especially with this aircraft, with the galley and aisle decor welcoming you. Honestly, if I could change anything, it would just be the airport experience. Honolulu Airport itself is actually one of my favorites with its different outdoor spaces and, just like the airline, it's decorated with island influence. The Hawaiian lounges just don't feel much better than some parts of the airport itself. The one we got for free was really just some coffee in a room. 
The other one wasn't terrible, but for that to be the one specifically designed for long haul business class or paying customers is just kind of sad. People have been going to Hawaii from mainland US, Australia, and Japan since forever. Recently, however, Hawaiian tourism has been spreading around the world, and Hawaiian Airlines growth ability at the current moment should allow it to fly to some new fun places. Sounds like London is one of the first ones on their bucket list, and personally, I would absolutely love to be there when it finally rolls out, especially if it's on this incredible airplane. Let me know your thoughts on this new look for Hawaiian Airlines, and until next Sunday, safe travels, I'll see y'all next time.